What's good guys? It's Mindy K here. So I know how in the last video I said I'd be making a part four to remember remember where I did all the achievements and endings and how to get them. But I decided it'd be easier to just put them all in like a Google Drive document and just have that um, for you guys to just read instead of making a whole video on that. So um, if you want to check that out, it'll I'll have that in the description of the last video. Thanks guys and hope you enjoy the video. What's good guys, it's Mitty K here and welcome to Little Red Lie. Um, this is a Steam game, apparently it's about like lying to people, I don't know much about it. I just saw it on IG and Snapchat and I was like, let me play that. So let's just get straight into this today. Okay, let's go. I know nothing about this game. Before you begin, okay, would you be willing to answer a brief questionnaire regarding confidential details of your personal fam and family finances? Your answers will be securely saved and stored and will influence several narrative events in the game. Alright, sure. That's cool. Thank you. Am I supposed to lie though? Because it's called a Little Red Lie, you know? In the previous year, was your personal income an ex- Ugh. Um, no. No, I'm broke, bitch. Do you regularly receive emergency funds? Not emergency, but like, uh... I'll say yeah, I get some money. Do you conceal the source of these funds and present yourself as being part of a social class which you're not in fact a part of? Nah, I'm gonna be honest, nah. Would you rather commit suicide than live in significant poverty? Y'all, that's some deep shit. I mean, that's, mm. I'm gonna say no to that. Thank you. Little Red Lie is now in possession of sufficient information about your receipt. Ugh. Would you like to continue? What if I say no? It doesn't let you. It's like, fuck off. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Oh. In Dystopia. By Sarah Stone. Mm. Boom. The way I see it, Dystopia is nothing but a distraction from reality that will be even worse. In Dystopia... Faceless stormtroopers tower over the horrified masses that cling together for warmth. The guardsmen grit their teeth and pull their triggers on throngs of desperate protesters. What the fuck is this? Cutting down waves of innocence with sinister certainty. Police brutality, guys? But in reality? In reality, reality is nothing like that. In reality, the police don't need to be scary to scare you. In reality, the courts are so clogged and the cops are so callous and the cage is so cramped that the thought of getting lost in the labyrinth of their log logistics scares you more than a bullet to the back of the head ever could. Damn, y'all! Shit, some truth! In reality, nobody needs to shoot you at all. You get knocked on your ass by a zillion dollar sound cannon and run away to save the eardrums you don't have the savings of the health insurance to lose. Damn, this game is brutal. In dystopia, tattered rags are dragged drab uniforms are dutifully worn by all. Met eyes and encoded gestures are made in shadow as the steel doors crash together. Ragtag rebels rediscover the unity of long lost ethnic identities and in each other they find hope, strength. Dude, guys, I can like, I'm a good reader but like, these are some big ass words. And even if their failure is assured, in dystopia they gain the one thing their tormentors can never possess. Love. But in reality, the only people who even notice you are strangers trying to look down your shirt. In reality, your best friend is a cell phone. A good one, if you're lucky. Damn. Okay. Under the bridge, in the parking lot, into the woods. They're waiting for me. Move, lie. <laughs> lie. That's a command. Move, highlight, menu. Okay, I didn't get to see all that. Fuck me. Lie about smoking. You know what they say, the only way to start quitting is to have one. I don't think that's how it works. Snow on the ground, rain in the sky, heat in the night. You figured out they were lying about how long this kind of climate change would take. And then it turns out that even the worst pessimism wasn't half as bad as it already was. Who knows, maybe this cigarette is the least toxic thing I've inhaled all day. Still, if I could quit, I would. That's a lie. Okay, so the red words are the lies, duh. Okay, too bad you only feel bad after it stops feeling good. Damn. Maybe the attitude is a little piece of what happened to everything. A little red lie. Fuck it, I didn't even want this. Bitch, you just had it. I'm just delaying the inevitable. Alright, let's go, but I have to tell them the truth. Tonight is the night. 
Bitch, you're not telling any truth. You haven't told any truth to me this whole time I've been playing this game. Okay. <laughs> so the world's fucked and I'm controlling a lying bitch. Got it. Before You Know It by Sarah Stone. Okay. These are the songs. Before You Know It, you feel like you're right back where you started. Back at home. Back to childhood. Back to depending on the people who should be depending on you. And you're so defined by what you're not. Never married, never successful, never belonging anywhere or to anything. You don't even know who you are. Still, it's strange to be past what feels like the point of no return and still so far from the end. Thanks for coming to get me. You were working late. If they don't, somebody else will. And if they don't, someone else will. Yeah, big project. They can't really trust too many people with it. Mm. Dots. I understand that I broke the chain, that without creating a future for it, even the closest family will eventually run out of things to talk about. I'll ask a question about some distant relative or a restaurant we haven't been to in a long time, just to break up the rhythm of the rain. But I don't really care, and I don't think they believe I do. The saddest thing, though, is that I think I used to. At least a bit. You just don't see the point. I mean, what does it have to do with you? Literally nothing that goes on around you has anything to do with you at all. You're just a sack of shit dragging yourself around from one day to the next. What could you even say about anything that would make you, wouldn't make you look like a fool? But still, you have to say something, even if it means pretending to be somebody you used to be in order to hide how you no longer feel like you are anybody at all. God, just, damn. She needs to talk to somebody. <laughs> what are your plans for the weekend? Feign interest in own life. Okay, that's my mission. Be a lying bitch. Sorry, what? The weekend. What are you doing? Oh, sleeping, watching movies. Promise to meet up with people and then never getting dressed. None of these sound like you're interested in doing anything with your life. I'll do the third one. I'll probably get coffee with Claire and Steve. I'm pretty tired, though. You know you're a loser when basic questions about what you're doing on the weekend feel like a humiliating interrogation. True. Well, maybe you should go somewhere new. Meet some new people. Um. I have nothing in common with She just, she hates her life. I'm embarrassed to be around regular people my own age. That one. Nothing in common. Yeah, you're right. I should see if anything is going on in the city. That's seems dangerous downtown right now though did you guys read about that rapper guy who got shot is something wrong we need to talk oh shit <laughs> but she seemed fine that stop being cryptic just tell me your mother is worried about what what happened to her this time what well, he excels now the moment he even thinks about her your sister's being worried about Sarah Mom is worried about you. Oh, your sister's not being worried about. Jesus Christ, he knew I would think it was a relapse. He always does it, says half of something. Pretends it's just his personality. He always says half of something. I'm fine. She thinks you work too much. She thinks I'm a lesbian. Too much of a slut to be taken seriously or not enough wanting to find somebody in the first place. I don't know what that means. Dots. It means she wants you to be happy. That your happiness is more important to her than anything else. the unsaid thing always I'm trying and your sister you know she's going to need your help and you know it won't be easy if you had someone that you could turn to when things got tough with her it might make all the difference he wants to hear somebody defend her she doesn't need me as much as you think she does she's more capable than you know That's, she is You've always been just like me. You're strong. You don't complain. And you've never been afraid of responsibility. But sometimes I think you can't see there's more to being strong than being on your own. No, that isn't it. I have to tell you something important, and I don't want you to say anything about it to your mom. Not yet. You cheating? Cancer, that's what got his mom. Heart failure, grandpa, Alzheimer's, runs all the way through his family. I mean, damn. She's very pessimistic. Let's try heart failure. Just tell me. We can't afford to take care of your sister anymore. Does she have some sort of mental illness? What does she do? It isn't just her. The medication costs for your mom. They just keep going up. What else do they put her on? I don't even know anymore. Between the two of them, it's a mountain. 
I'm sure they're hoping it's a doctor say so. We'll get through it. Your sister doesn't listen to me, Sarah. At the very least, I need you to get her to stop buying whatever she feels like off the internet. I'm not trying to pit you against her. If she doesn't knock it off, we won't have any choice but to start charging your rent. This is their fault. They need to take the credit card away from this little girl. A little red lie. Okay, so basically she's talking to her like dad in the car. And she can't like afford shit, but she didn't tell him that. And they can't afford shit, so that's why she didn't tell him that she couldn't afford shit. Because she doesn't want him to give her shit. Okay, but before you blow your brains out over some attractive upper middle class white woman just because you would fuck her brains out, I was thinking, damn dude, calm down. Maybe you could take a moment to talk about the things she told you. Real talk. Real talk, okay. Talk about the things that people like her will never tell you. The Money. By Arthur Fox. You know her. Overeducated, underemployed, bridging into 40 with no real prospects, no real anything. And then, one day, a bill finally arrives that cannot be paid, one which even the family made her feel invincible all her life can no longer bear. Then it all falls down. And the woes kept tumbling down. Self-pity woes me, the toxic, dishonest belief that even if you'd had a shot, you never had a chance. But let me ask you something. Where was this person five years ago? I'll tell you where they were. And yeah, we went shopping. They were pretending they never saw it coming. They were racking up debt, desperately hoping they would never lose imaginary face with kombucha, sibbing, celebrity, sibbing celebrities. I don't know. Is that a drink? Ten years ago, they they were blowing every cent they made or could borrow in service to a hashtag. Shoes, travel, asinine brunches. Fifteen years ago, forget it. Laughing it up in the hollow halls of higher learning, acting as if they were somehow smart enough to get a degree in anthropology, but not enough to know if they were digging their own graves. Anthropology, nice. And now they want the world to feel sorry for them, so they won't tell you about what they really come from. They won't tell you about the safety net that sits secretly beneath them. They won't tell you that how they did it to themselves. Will you keep standing in that house, staring out that window? Or will you wake up, take control of your life, and make the sacrifice that could save them all? Shit, okay. Better or worse, there really no, there really is no place like home. In all my years of living on my own, I never achieved even a fraction of the sense of place that I still feel every time I walk through this door. Everything is just where it was, and everyone is just who they were. But at the same time, the older you get, the more that same comfort starts to scare the hell out of you. You guys really need a dishwasher. It's a waste of water, Sarah. I know, but everyone is wasting it. Why shouldn't you? I'm not suggesting it because I'm worried about you putting any kind of strain on yourself. I just wish you would take it easy. When I first moved back here, I tried to help with the groceries, but I never bought the right things. Yet they never told me to stop. They just started restocking things before I did. When I tried to cook myself, it was so much worse than what we were used to because both my parents are amazing cooks. I eventually gave up on it. I tried to help out with the gardening, even fixing things around the house, but mom had a way she wanted the yard to look, and it took dad twice as long to do anything with me helping him. You can't be an adult in the place you grew up. It isn't your job there, and you can't break up the order of things in a place where that order is everything. All you can do is dry the dishes you can't clean, vacuum the floors you, that you can't build, mow the lawn that you can't grow. And worst of all is that you feel the opposite of fear. It feels good to be in a place that feels like a sanctuary, that makes you feel safe. But you're always thinking about that you won't. You're always thinking that you won't be ready when they're gone, or when they need you precisely because they aren't. Sarah. Yeah. Give me a hand with something. Go see what he needs. I need a break. Just leave the mom. I can do it. Her parents kind of suck, and so does she. Jesus is the savior. Ah, okay. I'm done. Um, yeah, what do you need? What's wrong, Dad? You hear that? Hear what? The music playing in the background? One of the stupid cats. It must have gotten out of your sister's room. Which one? 
The one that likes to get out of your sister's room. Okay. Bobo? <laughs> Bobo. I don't hear anything. I heard a meow. You know what your mother's like. The allergies. Then why have a cat? I'm gonna help her get ready for bed. You can find the cat and get it back downstairs. Alright. Conceal Bobo's escape. <laughs> Let the cat run away? And how does it end? It seems somewhere between unlikely and impossible that my sister would ever have anything resembling the life of a social or productive person ever again. If these people never get fixed, what is the point of them being slightly less broken? What is the point of all this pain? Shit. My mom would have barged in my room like, bitch, you better answer me. Oh. Hey. Hey. Oh. Oh. Okay. 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 Yo. Yo, yo, oh, this beat is fired, that bitch is fired, I need to retire, this game is making me tired, oh, okay. <laughs> Alright guys, I'm gonna end it here, um, I may or may not play more of this, I'll just have to see, it's kinda slow, and I have to read it all, so it's like, uh, I thought there'd be more gameplay, so I might play this on my own a little bit, and like, skip to like any GC parts or whatever. But, um, for now, we'll just see. But yeah, make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this game. And subscribe if you want to see more from my channel. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay wilding, y'all. Peace out.